and welcome back to our show, Dreams, Passion and Your Hong Kong Story. Every time on this show, we bring before you people from different walks of life who have pursued their passion and found great success in Hong Kong. Today we have with us a very creative entrepreneur, someone who's very regarded in Hong Kong for bringing back or actually reviving a lot of Hong Kong designs into his iconic lifestyle store, Goods of Desire, popularly known as G.O.D. Let's meet Douglas Young, CEO and co-founder. Hello, Douglas, Hi, and welcome Jack. to our show. Thanks for coming. G.O.D. is an iconic Hong Kong lifestyle store and a multifaceted cultural trendsetter. Born and brought up in Hong Kong and being trained as an architect in UK, Douglas founded G.O.D. in Hong Kong, initially with a view to introduce well-priced and well-designed furniture, but G.O.D. has over a period of time evolved into a very stylish lifestyle brand, which is actually inspired by the vibrant culture of Hong Kong. Let's talk to Douglas and find out what role has Hong Kong played in his life? Ever since I grew up, I've been drawing. My mother always tells me I was able to draw before I could even speak. That's what she tells people anyway. And, but I do believe that because I've always had very strong visual sense. I see. So I've always thought that I'd love to be doing something um, to do with design, art, style. Uh -huh. You know, that's my strength. So, so when you moved to Hong Kong, when, um, what motivated you to start G.O.D.? Well, I was born in Hong Kong, but then I did spend a large part of my life yes. um, in the UK because I went to UK boarding school. I, <laughs> I studied architecture. I came back. And by the time I came back, actually, precisely half my life was spent in the UK and half in Hong Kong at that point. Okay. So I felt myself a bit of a cultural hybrid. Um, and it was only coming back to Hong Kong that I suddenly realized, wow, actually Hong Kong is um is is full of character and it seems almost like a strange place to me um after having been away for so long because when i was actually living here i didn't think it was that special or was that full of character because you see the thing same Every things day in day out right yeah, you here. only have a sense of strangeness if you have another reference right so when i came back Hong Kong suddenly became exotic. And that's when I said, now, this is inspiration. I should do something with all this uh, exoticism. Mm -hmm. um, and that's sort of when I started G.O.D. But it was a private uh, passion at the time because I didn't think people would share with me such an interest. I see. And then it sort of took a little while for me to feel confident and to actually meet more people who are interested and collaborate with other people and to, and to build on this kind of quest to find this kind of elusive Hong Kong character. Yeah. <laughs> so, so tell us, how has the journey been? It's been really, I'm, I'm so blessed and I feel very grateful to be able to have this privilege. I really consider it a privilege to have met so many interesting people and to work with so many interesting people and to get great feedback from customers. I mean, not that I've opened shops all over the world. To me, that's not interesting. To me, numbers like that is not interesting. I'm interested in really deep relationships and really inspiring people and really um, maybe setting a trend, setting a new trend for Hong Kong people to have more pride in local culture and, and have a voice from over here to the rest of the world. Right. So how do you differentiate G.O.D. from other Hong Kong inspired brands? We in G.O.D. is very proudly Hong Kong to the extent that we ram it down your throat. I mean, okay. that sounds terrible, <laughs> but I think that there are other brands in Hong Kong that are very successful, much more successful than I am commercially because they've opened all over the world and so many countless shops. And yet they are hiding under the, 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 the disguise of being a non-Hong Kong brand. Okay. I think traditionally, because maybe because of the colonial mindset maybe, right. we view things that are foreign to be superior. Mm -hmm. That's always been this colonial tradition. So when it comes to a brand, a lot of people still think that foreign brands are superior. Yeah. And that if you tell people that you're from China or you're from Hong Kong, immediately you, you are not at a premium. So we are trying to buck that trend. I, I don't see. think this is 
a healthy thing for our society. I think in the long term, the only thing that truly belongs to ourselves is our sense of identity and our sense of culture. And I know it's difficult to, to, to grasp that, mm -hmm. to own that, it's really difficult. We need to really find it for ourselves. And it's a long journey, but we need to do it. And I, I would like to be one of the pioneers for that quest. And in this trend-setting journey of yours, <laughs> what has been some of the challenges that you have faced in growing your business? Well, naturally, as I was saying, uh, I have a lot of resistance from people telling me that if you try to be a Hong Kong brand, it's not going to work because Hong Kong people don't like Hong Kong things or right. Hong Kong people are, uh, are, are, are rather disguise the fact that they're from Hong Kong, from Chinese. Um, so I have that kind of advice coming. Um, I think also in Hong Kong, because it, we, we are an open and free society and part in terms of not just freedom of expression, but in terms of taxation yes. of goods coming in. Small Hong Kong companies like mine have to compete with other global players. You know, you right. have the huge conglomerates from Europe coming in and dominating the retail scenes and they dictate the rents. Right. So I, myself as a private small company have to be on the equal platform as these big players. Right. So that is a huge, huge challenge. challenge. Um, yeah. Tell us some of the milestone achievements of GOD that you are proud of. Gosh, milestones. Um, I don't know about milestones, but every day seems to be a challenge. I mean, even conquering the last virus epidemic, the SARS, <laughs> having conquered that was a bit of a milestone. Right. I mean, we're in the middle of the current one, so yeah. I suspect when this is over, it will be another milestone. People say that businesses should go stable after five years, but for me, that's never happened. It's always been a big challenge. But it's also been a fun ride because Hong Kong is about going on a roller coaster ride. You know, right. it's full of ups and downs, and that's what makes it exciting. So, other than, of course, being a retail entrepreneur, you know, you're really known for being a brand ambassador for promoting Hong Kong art and culture. Tell us something about all your initiatives in that direction. I like to promote Hong Kong because I'm very proud of the place. And I see that the, we have a lot of things to offer to the rest of the world in mm -hmm. terms of our style, in terms of the way we think, in terms of the way, you know, we're such a dense and high tech and sophisticated community. And I think we can share a lot of our experiences with the rest of the world. And I think Hong Kong is so well positioned to play the role of the epicenter of cultural happenings, right. as well as being kind of soft power center for China. Because I think the problem with China, or maybe one of the problems is that it's suffering from a lack of good soft power. Mm -hmm. China has always been struggling to sell to the world that we have fine history, we are a belligerent race, I mean, all this sort of thing is, 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 is not working because we, we, unlike the Americans, are not as good as producing great movies and entertainment and art and all this sort of thing. And I think Hong Kong has a role to play. I think Hong Kong people have always been good at style and art and entertainment. And we can really help China polish the image, you know. Soft power, I think, is very important in times of peace. Mm -hmm. You know, unlike military power or economic power, right. soft power is just as important because soft, it's convincing. You, so when you say soft power, you mean the power of art and culture? Yes, art okay. and culture and selling to people our story, mm -hmm. getting people to buy into our lifestyle yes. and our values. I completely agree with you. I think we Hong really Kong need that. Actually do and that. Hong Kong can play that role. Hong Kong should not be playing a political role because this, we're not the capital. Yeah. We shouldn't be trying to do, I mean, even competing with Shanghai as the economic capital of China is really going to be tough. Yeah. But the role of the, the, the soft power center is wide open. That's a very interesting point. Hong Kong to play the role of soft power center. Yes, for China. that's the cultural hub. The cultural that's hub. That's the role we should play. And but I've been trying really to convince people to 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 to, to see it this way. And 
I'm, I'm having trouble, I'm afraid. <laughs> <The> our <laughs> leaders, I hope, it takes yeah, I'm, time. Sure, yes. I'm sure leaders <laughs> of Hong Kong is watching this program. And yes. Please, I appeal to you guys. <laughs> have a thought. <laughs> I love working with people. I love collaboration. And I have these crazy ideas. So I work with photographers or artists or fashion people and come up with collaboration and crossover projects. And these become kind of hopefully viral mm -hmm. and expand beyond Hong Kong and beyond just my shop. Right. So that's how I've been working. So I'm always loving to meet people and work with people on new experimental projects. So what should Hong Kong be doing to kind of become a leader in the art and culture space? Yes, I think what we should be doing as a city is to be more together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because we have been very divided over political issues, over even the virus issue. I mean, so many different affairs. Right. Right. Hong Kong is a very fractured society. But I really think that we really should come together as a community. Young people, older people, people with different political views, people with different gender, people with different race should come together. Because Hong Kong is such a place. You know, yes. We are very mixed in that regard. Totally. And that should really be our strength. You know, the fact that we're so international yes. should be our strength. But there are problems, like for example, language. You know, right. There is this yearning language divide, which is Chinese and non-Chinese speaking. I'm sure you come across it too with your programs, yes, because do you, do you broadcast in English or Chinese? And you have to choose. Yes. And I think it's so unfortunate that we have to make such a choice. So how do you bridge this cultural divide? I have some crazy ideas, which okay. I, I will, maybe one day we could, I, we could share. Yes. But I think we need, to, we need to conquer this cultural divide. And if we can, then Hong Kong will become so much stronger as a compact international community that has been punching well above our weight. That's great. That's, you have such a good thought. It's very inspiring. Coming back to your professional journey, how has Hong Kong been for your professional journey? Also from a point of view of growth of GOD in Hong Kong yeah. and from a point of view of scaling GOD in some other countries right. that you have scaled. We are quite small in Hong Kong. Uh, even though we've been around for more than 20 years, mm -hmm. I think there are other companies that have grown 100 <laughs> times bigger than us during this time. But uh, I've never set myself this goal of like, huge expansions. Um, we have tried and I find that the times when we were actually uh, in overseas countries such as China, Taiwan and Singapore were not the happiest of times because when the company becomes of a certain size then it becomes more of a monster <laughs> to me anyway. Mm. Uh, it allows me to be less creative or at least I haven't found the way. Maybe I'm just not clever enough as a business person. Mm -hmm. But I find that when the business becomes too large, at least too big for me to, to, to work on, then it becomes a numbers game and political game and I have to appease people who are not happy. And I f I'm finding less time being creative right. and experimental. Mm -hmm. um, when the size is smaller, mm -hmm. I feel that it's easier to be creative and easier to be impulsive and easier to change direction. That's actually, I find, what is really fun about what I do. Yeah. It's not about how much money or the numbers. Right. For me, the fun part is to be able to do creative and crazy things on the turn of a, of a dime, you know. Mm. That's what I really enjoy about my business. So I said to my partner, listen, let's just be grateful that we are able to sustain ourselves and keep this going and enjoy it. And not aim to be like a global right. brand. And I guess the small size and the dense population of Hong Kong yes. must be helping you with that. It is, yes, it is. So how has Hong Kong been for your personal journey? Hong Kong has been good to me. Um, Hong Kong has always been, in my mind, a place that rewards hard work. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm very grateful. All right, Douglas, are you ready for a rapid fire question round? Fire away. <laughs> That's getting to know Douglas Hong Kong story in a bit more fun way. Your favorite formal and casual dining place in Hong Kong? I don't have a favorite formal dining because I don't like formal dining. I'm not a formal person. Okay. But I love going to this place in Yunlong. Uh -huh. It's an 80 year old restaurant called Hou Dou Tai. They're famous for their prawn roll noodle, mm -hmm. Ha Ji Min. I love that. 
And I love going to Yunnan because it's kind of like my childhood Hong Kong. Your favorite way to hang oh, okay. loose with friends and family in Hong Kong? As you know, I'm a car person. So okay. I, lo I love driving. I love uh -huh. driving to Sheko uh -huh. on the weekend, especially in the morning. Picnic on the beach. How nice. Yeah, nice drive. Okay. So your favorite solitary activity in Hong Kong? And this is a new thing. Okay. I've been writing. Oh. I've always fancied myself as a writer. This is something I've not done, and I have a huge admiration for writers. Wow. So I've been writing a novel because <laughs> wow. I'm sort of sometimes on self-isolation with this virus going on. Um, I actually enjoy being at home sometimes and writing. Wow. And I'm writing a, a story based on Hong Kong. I'm writing a Hong Kong story. Yeah. Wow, unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. How many talents do you have? Uh. You know, my original question to you was, what's your most favorite hobby? But I want you to tell our audience, what are the different kind of hobbies that you do? Because here in your store, I see that you do a lot of things. Yeah. So tell us <laughs> about all the different hobbies that you so, pursue and which one of it is closest to your heart. I'd say that I have a lot of interests and maybe I'm not strong in any one of them, but I just like the learning process. You know, okay. it, I, I'm not trained as a photographer, for example, but I just like to experiment and and learn and see how my techniques improve okay. and, and that process is something that I yearn for right so, which is why um, you can see me painting attempting in fashion design and graphics and homeware and furniture and architecture and all this sort of thing and I guess I like this learning process I like to try different things out and, okay. and see how it works but I guess the one thing that unite all that I do is this idea for Hong Kong Hong Kong has always been my topic and my love so I try to express Hong Kong in all these different ways what was the last time you did something for the first time I guess it will have to be uh, cooking okay. <laughs> cooking with prawn Pace, because last weekend I was in Tai O, uh -huh. and they're very famous for prawn paste. I was thinking, you know what, what can I do with this stuff? You know, it's, I don't really cook Chinese food, but my favorite kind of food is Italian. So okay. I tried putting the, some of the prawn paste into mm -hmm. spaghetti. Wow. <laughs> so I don't think, I, I don't know if anybody's tried that, you know. Spaghetti with prawn paste? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and it worked. I thought it was quite tasty. <laughs> Interesting, I'm going to try that. <laughs> so... Which is your most favorite piece from of all the pieces that you keep designing in your store? Oh, that's really difficult to say because it's almost like your baby. You know, once you've created something, it's it's kind of like your child. And it's really difficult to choose yes. between one and another. I guess the ones that are really difficult to bring about, yeah. these are the ones that I feel most bonded with. The ones that are more, the difficult child, <laughs> difficult but children. Are the I ones. love you in the chance sir. That's oh, from yes. the store, right? Oh, yes, <laughs> it is, absolutely. You see, I'm wearing a, like a baseball cap and sneakers and shorts and not buttoning it up completely. Because Chang Sam is a very versatile costume because you can button everything up. And if you right. button everything up and you can look very formal, you can go into the Hong Kong club or whatever, yeah. and you can get away with it. I actually like to get people to wear Chang Sam in a kind of like a more funky way. Because I, I think this is how we can continue the Chang Sam tradition. Only if young people think it's stylish or fashionable or fun will this thing live on. You know? Right. So sometimes even by opening it up, you know, it's kind of like a, yeah, it's like a like long a jacket. Trench coat. Yeah. yeah. And it, it flows, I think it flows very well. Beautiful. So, and it's asymmetric. It's very yes. modern looking. Right? Right. So, and I pair it with very Western, like modern things like sneakers or baseball caps. Things that traditionally is not paired with, which gives it a new twist. I see. It's Chinese tradition is to pair it with unlikely things. Rather than just have things that are completely traditional and formal, uh -huh. Tone it down, mix it with modern things so it becomes part of contemporary life. Okay, amongst all the stores that you have, because you have multiple in Hong Kong, right? And in Macau and in Taiwan, which one of it was the one you had most fun starting with? My first store is Hollywood Road, and I, I would always say that Hollywood Road is um, where my heart is. Okay. Maybe, because we've been through a lot with that store and my, all my memories are there. How would you invite the 7 billion people of the world? Why should they visit Hong Kong? Uh, I think I'm quite a well-traveled person, I think. I've been to many, many places. But I don't know of a place like Hong Kong that is so compact, that is so sophisticated, that is so international, and that's so fast-paced, that is so energetic, that you can go from the beach and 10 minutes later you're in the heart of the city. Not many places are like that. And Hong Kong is going to be the future. By coming to Hong Kong, 
you have a glimpse of the future. What would you tell the business leaders and policy makers around the world? Why should they engage with Hong Kong? The business leaders should engage with Hong Kong because it is a place where you can experiment and you can try something out. Here you get results fast. Okay. Yeah, like I said, Hong Kong is a place that rewards those who work at it. We don't have much red tape. We are a free society. I know of no other place. Mm -hmm. What are you most proud of as a Hong Konger? Because Hong Kong has always been able to punch well above our weight. Throughout the 150 what are they, years of our existence, you know, Hong Kong is just a small city, right? And yet, on a global scale, it's almost like a country. Yes. You know, when people say Hong Kong, People forget that Hong Kong is just a city, whereas you know, all these other places that we're being compared to, France, America, mm -hmm. Canada, these are all countries. So that shows how amazing this place is. Well, thank you so much, Douglas, <laughs> for coming to our show. And we wish you pleasure. all the very best in all your endeavors. Thanks, Jaya. Thank you. So stay tuned for our next episode on Dreams, Passion, and Your Hong Kong Story, where we bring you yet another fascinating story from this wonderful land, Hong Kong. Thank you.